my new to me jet midi lathe um, i'm super happy with this purchase i, I really am uh, so i'm going to uh, go through setting it up and getting it spinning and uh, some organization stuff like that but i'm not the guy that normally gets deals uh, i'm the guy that pays full retail and two weeks later finds out that i could have got it for half the cost or i think i'm getting a deal and it turns out that uh, somebody else is selling it for half the cost. <laughs> anyway, this, I actually bought this from um, a guy that uh, buys Jet and Powermatic equipment that's damaged um, and refurbishes it. And so, like, this got damaged in, in shipping. Um, it had some pieces that had to be replaced, like the tailstock and stuff. Uh, I got it for less than half of retail. Um, it's a super sweet deal. Um, it works great. Metal gears, the change gears, the threading gears, everything's everything's really what I wanted. And uh, some some cosmetic imperfections, don't even care. Uh, they got it up and running, got it tuned, and uh, I even got an extra four jaw chuck, a big uh, a big plate with it, some extra tooling uh you know quick change stuff so i couldn't be happier with this purchase i, I really couldn't so um let, let's get to cutting stuff maiden voyage of the mini lathe the carbide cutting tools are taking this aluminum off just fine Making my first part for the new lathe, I have to turn the, uh, the thickness of a nut down. And turned all the way down. I started off with uh, an M10 1.5 pitch uh, nut, and uh, this is what the final product is. Somebody transposed some numbers, and instead of making this, he made this out of this, so I had to recut another nut. <laughs> Why did I turn down a nut? Well, because I wanted to install a quick change tool post instead of the standard Chinese model. So, success! A little bit of an unboxing. I got a new knurler set. Mmm, look at that. So pretty. So the whole reason that my other knurler had an issue was because it sat um, here in the in the tool holder, and all of uh, all the stress was here on my my cross slit. With this type, it squeezes together, and the stress is is here in the bars and not on my cross slit. Uh, this one actually comes with three different cutting dies. Those are the medium, and then these are the fine. Uh, fine pitch and then some super coarse ones these are nice for like tool handles or for uh, like tattoo grips or you know something like that that you really want to get a, a handle on but let me fire it off and show you how it works there we go Perfect for, for a little grip. You now, like I said, I like my uh, my knurling to just be a little heavier than this. There we go. I'm making a couple of bushings for the Jeep to hang the uh, soft doors on. Doing a little bit of parting to make the washer itself. And there we have it, four perfect little tiny bushings. A little bit of organization never hurt nobody. <laughs> So I have a ton of these blue bins that I got surplus, and uh, I've got I've got material in them. But what I thought I'd I'd really like to do is put uh, put some organization up above the lathe, 
and I'll include the link to this this panel I got it from Uncle Jeff on Amazon um, as well as the uh, as the blue bins or pink or purple or whatever color you want uh, so that I could not only put put material in here that that I would be using on the lathe but also for things like um, uh, tooling carbides for uh, extra extra rollers for the knurling tool that sort of thing so let me go ahead and populate this up and there we go I actually have uh, 39 of the organization bins on there uh, these are dropped down for a little bulkier things and uh, right above uh, the lathe I think that's a, a great place for storage as long as you don't reach up and across while the lathe is spinning don't don't do that boys and girls that's a that's a really bad idea but one one more project a uh, small tiny project done in a way for uh, for my lathe and, and machine station phase two of my uh, my lathe organization is complete I have my tool holder there with uh, the tailstock holder and the chuck key holder uh-huh uh-huh no more chuck keys in the chuck like a dumbass newbie <clears throat> excuse me I uh, I'm real happy with this setup now um, I got to get stuff in the bins and get them labeled and uh, get the mill area tuned in to do the same but yeah the lathe is running and cutting and making useful shit My blocks were a little wet and I didn't want to transfer any of the any of the water into the base of the lathe or uh, into the concrete. So that's what sandwich bags are for. Side note, I had actually planned on anchoring it down to the slab just using some some tap cons because uh, I've seen I've seen it done before and I was actually mentioning it to one of the the old school machinists at work, one of the one of the grumpy guys. <laughs> And uh, he's like, no, no, absolutely don't do it. Um, you, you don't, you don't want to do that. Put a little more uh, weight in the base or something. Do, do not bolt it down because what'll happen is that you could likely twist your ways. Um, so I believed him because he knows more than me. Uh, I'm not a machinist. Have I said that on multiple occasions? Anyway, he knows more than me. So I believed him, and um, I also checked online just kind of uh to see what the uh, the thought was with leveling feet um you know using rubber or using teflon or, or nylon bottomed and in that research everybody else also said you know don't bolt it down so yay uh, side benefit is the lathe is actually up another inch and a half to get it a little closer to the working height that's more comfortable so i don't feel that i have to lean down the whole time so Real happy with this. And uh, my friend Jake, actually, um, while this is a small lathe, um, it is unlight. And my friend Jake, who is making some pins on the lathe, which is where you see all this from, was actually here tonight and gave me a hand uh, lifting it uh, and putting it in place. So... Jacob, working on a pin on the, uh, on the lathe. I'm happy with where the, the lathe is and its usefulness and, and really excited with some of the things that, that I'm making on it. Uh, I want it to live up to its absolute fullest potential and in order to do that it, it does need um, a two axis DRO. Um, so I think that's going to be my next project and that's actually big enough that it's going to take its own video. So uh, the next video on the lathe will be the, uh, the selection, um, installation and use of a DRO on a small mini lathe.